At the age of 84, Hatsumi continues to impart his special knowledge to his many disciples. Noda is a city on the outskirts of Tokyo. It's a quiet town with a population of less than 160,000. But one area sees an endless stream of foreign visitors coming and going each day. They're here seeking that which they cannot find anywhere else in the world. Namely, they have arrived to learn under legend and modern day ninja Masaaki Hatsumi. At 84 years old, Hatsumi manages the well-built foreigners effortlessly. of his disciples hail from outside Japan, and over 10,000 trainees attend this dojo each year. Okay, I want you to remember this hand technique. Hatsumi is using a very light touch. He's not applying any pressure. I'm not taking a hold. But you see, we're connected. I'm not taking a hold, but you see it's connected. Everyone, I can try to put a technique on here. I took his finger, but I'm keeping distance. Let it go here. Well, since I close uh, all doors, I can move. It's like a person. So the important thing is to control the space. No matter how large or speedy your attacker is, if you can use the space and control his center of gravity with your finger, you've got him. Just seeing how Saki is moving, it's always different and it's feeling so well as a hacker. It's very hard to imitate that. It's, a, it's really a feeling thing. And I always feel like if he's adding something at the end of the technique, so we are we don't know what to concentrate on anymore. But uh, essentially, it's always at the beginning, the way it's moving. So. Hatsumi Sensei, I felt adapted to what we were doing. So in essence, we were fighting ourselves. Um, there was very little that Hatsumi Sensei was doing. Hence, Hatsumi Sensei saying, I did this to myself. We were fighting ourselves. Now, don't try to grab and right don't away. Don't try to take something, oh, right, you know, immediately. <coughs> space the is space key. is important to Kukon. The ability to demonstrate superhuman powers. That's the essence of ninjutsu. <laughs> Rooted in the Togakure Ryu school, 
Hatsumi's ninjutsu incorporates techniques from various ancient Japanese martial arts. One of his most trusted disciples, Hiroshi Nagase, demonstrates the self-defense skills at the heart of Hatsumi's ninjutsu. When your arm is gripped by the opponent, you need to unlock it. To unlock your arm, there is a technique called tehodoki. You can't unlock it like this. So you move your hand like this. Then you remove your metal weapon. And when your opponent clinches, you escape. You grab here. You're using leverage, so you don't need force. This is because the opponent will try to tear loose from you to prevent having his arm broken. Then you flip him. This is dogaishi. Oh, I'm choking him. Oops, dangerous. His face is red. <laughs> this is koppo. In other words, controlling the skeletal structure. This is when you're seized by the collar. Same thing. This technique is called Koshijutsu. The thumbnail and forefinger are used to crush the opponent's pinky. This is called Dakken. I'm countering a punch with my left hand. This time with my right. When held from behind, stomp on the opponent's foot, then thrust the head back. From there, both arms can be freed. When attacked, dodge out of the way. Kneel swiftly, grab the leg, and roll the body. Take hold of the attacker's stick and strike his own foot. A rainy day calls for an easy victory. The umbrella becomes a weapon. One man plays a key role in the story of Hatsumi's life. Hatsumi entered the world of ninjutsu at the age of 27. His master, Toshitsugu Takamatsu, is a man of legend. He was called the last fighting ninja. Takamatsu taught that all Japanese martial arts, including the Tokakureyu school of ninjutsu, have the art of self-defense at their very core. This thinking is at the root of Hatsumi's ninjutsu. My teacher walked into the room. I was sitting down and he said, easy, easy. I couldn't stand up. I was frozen. I was but a small bug in his hand. Like a bee trying to sting that can't find its stinger. 
That's how it felt. It was fear. I think that's what it was. I ended up studying under him for 15 years. Hatsumi's career took a turn in the 1960s. It was during a time when a huge ninja boom swept popular culture. All Japanese kids wanted to dress up like ninja. Ninjutsu itself was all the rage. Ninja hopefuls flocked to Hatsumi's dojo. Producers of film and television period dramas took notice of the teacher and came in droves for his martial arts expertise. His trainees included big names such as international action star Sonny Chiba. Chiba vividly recalls how Hatsumi described ninja battles. Ninja must win the battle, even if the enemy is a samurai. A ninja enters the enemy's range holding a sword to trick him, and he swings a scabbard when the enemy is unguarded. The scabbard has been filled with urine beforehand. It's ammonia, and it gets in his eyes. Then the ninja finishes him off. Ninja wouldn't hesitate to use such cowardly tactics in order to win. From a samurai's perspective, the methods are underhanded. But the ninja has to win. If he's killed, he can no longer feed his family. He must survive. It was the only way for ninja to survive in their given environment. That's why it's so real. That's why it's appealing. Hatsumi became sought after for work in television and film, but his punishing schedule eventually destroyed his health. I suffered from autonomic ataxia for five years. I couldn't sleep. I had diarrhea for about a year and a half, and I lived on yogurt for a year and a half. But I continued working. Five years of media craze ruined my life and sapped my energy. I was in my 30s, lasted for five years, but I recovered. Otherwise, I'd be dead. It was through this health crisis that Hatsumi came to reassess his concept of physical strength and weakness. He no longer focused solely on a combative spirit and physical power, and this greatly influenced and altered his technique. He never initiates the attack. With the smallest movement possible, he dodges, then controls his opponent. With the opponent down, Hatsumi applies no additional pressure. He presses with little more than a finger, yet his attacker is unable to move. Hatsumi's newfound frontier is one that does not rely on force. He's found some commonality with female ninja called Kunoichi. Kunoichi turned their weakness into a weapon when attacked by men.
Escape is one tactic. The Kunoichi cunningly creates an advantageous situation and brings in her attackers. Then, she deftly fells them. And naturally, she survives. Showing your weakness to gain the higher hand is the innermost secret of martial arts. Women are typical practitioners of this. It means to become both the positive and negative. You have to know both the positive and negative sides. Sayaka Oguri is a 22-year-old kunoichi. She received ninjutsu training from her father. Koichi Oguri was one of Hatsumi's finest disciples. When he was 50, he was blessed with his only child, and he decided to give her a ninja education. The families were very close. Hatsumi treated Sayaka like his own granddaughter. But Sayaka's father, who was also her master, passed away four years ago when Sayaka was 18. Okay, Sayaka, it's your turn. Go on. Have a go. Hatsumi and his leading students are reviewing her progression. Okay. 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 Sayaka is visiting her family home. Mm, it's been a month since I was here last. I come home once a month to visit my father's grave. That's the house, and the dojo is over there. into this kind of waiting room. And there's the dojo. Sayaka practiced with her father here every day. I think my father was just letting me play rather than giving me martial arts training. It was like he made martial arts into playtime for me. He knew I wouldn't continue practicing if it took an official training form. So he just let me play with things like throwing shuriken, well, fake shuriken made with paper. But it was goofing around. At some point, such play naturally became my ninja training. She was just two when her father started her on ninjutsu. She's kept it up for 20 years. When she's practicing alone here, she feels a deep bond with her father. Ninjutsu is an essential and practical tool for daily life. I think that's why my father wanted me to practice it. My father was also older when he had me. I think he thought he might not be around forever to take care of me. So he wanted to educate me, Sayaka, to be independent and self-sufficient in order to survive. I believe that was very important to him. Sayaka is training at Hatsumi's dojo toward a major goal. <laughs> for, 
She's eager to pass the Godan, or fifth, Don test. Okay. Examinees must close their eyes and sense the movement of the striker behind them. Sumi was in training, he brilliantly dodged his master sword. Okay. Detecting an invisible threat is an essential ninja skill. Okay. Sayaka's test is a month away. I've been dreaming of this since I was little. I think undergoing the test will lead to improved self-confidence. And taking on a fifth down test will likely change my perspective. The ninja disappears into the night, dons disguises, lies, and catches the opponent off guard. Ninjutsu literature from the 17th century shares techniques to disguise oneself into several occupations. There's the jovial street entertainer. A wandering priest hidden behind a straw mask. And a monk. All are veneers meant to deceive the enemy. The ninja hides in the dark among the trees. Disappearing from the attacker's vision, the ninja reappears without a sound and takes the opponent's life from behind. One moment, he's low on the ground, and the next, perched atop a tree. He leads one to believe he is where he is not. The ninja effortlessly manipulates truth and falsity. The two elements also exist in the ninja's weapons. This is Hatsumi's home. Hatsumi keeps at home a vast collection of typical ninja weapons, including a remarkable array of shuriken. Pointy shuriken are made of iron. They are thrown at the enemy to buy escape time. Everyday objects were also used as weapons. The tea ceremony. Everyone's relaxed, right? But they use metal chopsticks for charcoal. These, in that tiny enclosed space, a weapon, right? A tea room is no place to visit lightly. You're hit with hot water and attacked with these, you're doomed. This is a pipe. It's called a kenkagi seru, a fighting pipe. It's more deadly than a jite metal baton. It's lethal. This is a tobacco container. 
It has a lion motif. Come closer. It's a pipe. The sword was made by a famous swordsmith. Wonderful, isn't it? These are all works of art. This is a weapon for blowing irritants to blind opponents. The weapon is made to look like a medicine case. You put your mouth here and blow. It's blinding. Weapons are concealed inside everyday goods. An object is not what it appears to be. This is the world of truth and deception. Do truth and deception exist in the subtle movements of Hatsumi himself? <laughs> <laughs> One man watches Hatsumi's technique closely. This is Tatsuya Naka. He's an instructor at the headquarters of the Japan Karate Association. With 40 years of training under his belt, Naka is one of the world's leading karate fighters. In pursuit of martial arts mastery, it has been his wish to study Hatsumi's techniques in person. The stick comes down in full force, but misses. It's dodged easily. Another miss. The attacker strikes, but Hatsumi isn't there. Soke can predict the timing when I'll be approaching him and where I'll be hitting. It seems as if I'm entrapped by his move. I'll say it again. If you think it's there, it's not. If you think it's not, it is. It's ambiguous. That's the space we're in. It's not about avoiding. He's simply not where one thinks he is. Is this truth or deception on Hatsumi's part? <laughs> Naka wants to know the answer. <laughs> Hatsumi shows Naka his weapon. This looks different, right? This is. We strike with it. This is incredible. And there's something inside. Did you actually use this? Yes, we all use it. <laughs> That's scary. My hands immediately go up. 
You see this? May I see your hand? I won't hurt you. See, this wraps around you. And then this hits you. Just like that. This comes in, twisting and turning. Watching you practice, you seem to be freely manipulating space and time. And you have complete control over your opponents. How do you do that? You must make the wall invisible. Make it invisible. Invisible? Yes, for example, you throw a punch. And then slowly I do this. He's, he's already seized me. Really? I swear. He's no longer in front of me. So I lose sight of my goal. Losing sight of one's goal. Hatsumi's opponents lose track of their enemy and fall out of balance. It's as if Hatsumi has disappeared before their eyes. Perhaps this is what Hatsumi means by invisible.